Hello guys and welcome back to another Friday Nights of Terror and Suspense. As promised, we have two stories tonight, one of y'all's and one of mine. I hope y'all are ready. Let's begin with the first story. Our first story has to do with a vampire that turns into a tree. Let's begin. Stories tell us that vampires are mythological beings that come mainly from the regions of Eastern Europe. However, the people of the other continents have their own horror stories about these creatures. Let's talk about a story that happened in Hunan, China. It is said that at the end of the 19th century, there lived an Anglo-Saxon man who wore really good attire. He also wore a big top hat and a black cane. People who saw his face were stunned. They said that the tone of his skin was whiter than milk, while a pair of shark fangs peeked out of his mouth. His favorite time to go out was around 11 at night, while the return to his house was around 3 in the morning. After a few years, a strange phenomenon began to occur in the town. Several farm animals began to disappear, only to find their bodies a few days completely bled resting at the edge of the lake. What kind of hellish creature can want the blood of our beast? The farmers wondered. From that moment, several of them set up night guards in order to discover the thief. Finally, one of the caretakers managed to shoot an individual who was trying to steal some sheep in the leg. From the thief's mouth came shrieks like those of a bat. While he was trying to get lost in the bushes, the night was as starry as ever. Behind him, he was leaving a large trail of blood. However, that vital liquid was not the usual tone that we all know that is red, but more of a violet color. The chase continued until the first rays of the sun began to appear. The vampire tried to cover his hands and his face with his coat, but it was too late. His albino skin became greenish, and one by one, the bones of his body began to appear. The incredible thing was that both his dress and his skeleton were turned into ashes. They left the remains there, hoping that the wind would carry away these ashes. However, the following week, a tree began to sprout from the depths of the earth. Its bark was red, and parts of its leaves had thorns. Some people tried to tear it down, but left behind their attempts to realize that their axes stuck to the trunk and blood flowed. Others surrounded the tree trunk with concrete and tried to put roofing on it so water wouldn't feed the tree. However, the tree continues to grow normally to this date. The legends of the East express that if this happens, it's probably the soul of the vampire slowly being regenerated while waiting for the right moment to resurface to the surface with wide thirst of revenge. I hope y'all like that story. Let's hope the vampire doesn't come for us. Our next story is about a girl by the name of Judy. Judy was a tender, kind, smiling girl with a lot of love for others, especially for animals. She loved art. She loved to express herself. She liked to make sculptures. She enjoyed the beauty captured in handmade drawings. It turned any moment of her experience into a beautiful work of art. When she turned eight, things began to change a little. There were times when she disappeared for hours without remembering where she had been, what she had done, or any detail that gave account of what had happened. 
her attitude was also different. Her interest in the world also were lost, along with her love of art. There were no drawings, sculptures, or smiles. Little by little, she began to move away from her family, spent whole days locked in her room, not wanting to talk to anyone, and seemed upset about everything. One day, I stayed to sleep in her house. Judy, her brother, and I were in the same room, her parents in the next one. She looked a little nervous looking towards the door and the window. Suddenly, a little scared, she said that the chupacabra was watching from the door and wanted to enter. In one leap, her brother was already closing the door, but she did not take her eyes off the window, saying that they would come through there. After covering the window so that nothing could be seen or any light could enter, Judy fell asleep feeling more secure. We would watch her just in case a nightmare happened. In a time that seemed reasonable, we also fell asleep. While we were sheltering her, we heard a click on the window, as if a branch of a tree was hitting it thanks to the wind. But it did not cease, and there were also no trees around. It became louder and more insistent, as if someone touched it from the outside, only with its snail. Playing the brave people we were, we decided to move a little of the blanket that was covering the window. At first, there was nothing, but at the moment we released the blanket, it felt like slow motion. A pair of gray hands, with long fingers, took the bar of the window. Giving impulse with them, slowly a gray mass appeared below the window. His big black eyes stared at us, and we were still, seeing his face with just one line instead of a mouth and two nostrils. He raised one leg, then the other, to pass between the bars, because he was very thin. When touching with the window glass, his body looked like and interference on the television. He went through without problems. Then he stood by Judy's bed. We had stepped back without noticing when he advanced and watched his form carefully. He was like a child, no more than a meter tall, thin, with a big head. He was naked. His skin was gray and slimy. I know because I touched it. The moment he took the girl by the arm, he pulled her very fast, as if he wanted to drag her out the window. I stretched out my hand and held him by the head. My fear was very great, because I couldn't let go. My hand closed very hard. I lifted it, but he was stuck to it. He kicked very loudly. I screamed, and then, with shrieks, three more of them went through the window in the same way. Judy's brother ran until she caught her by the foot, but then those creatures were very strong. One of them took her at the same time by the arm and pulled them with such ease as if it were a pair of rags. The other took care of her brother and released her, and her two wrists were broken. The one in my hand was released, or I don't know if it did it, but they went out the window, climbed up the fence like spiders and jumped it with no problems. We left immediately. We tried to catch him, but the road was too long. We had to leave the room to cross the dining room and the living room until we got to the kitchen. There was a door with a long corridor that led us out. I climbed, I climbed on the washing machine, but already I could not see anything. Judy disappeared for two days. After that, in her drawings, we saw a change in her. In the drawings, there was only blood, evil, demons, and those great creatures were always present. Judy was never the same again. I hope y'all like these stories, guys. Y'all can always find stories like this here on Friday Nights of Terror and Suspense. Next time, I'll be doing the same. 
I'll be telling a story in one of y'all's songs. Y'all can send it to the email or my Instagram that are provided below. Go like and subscribe if y'all want. Hit the notification bell. Share it with people. Make this channel grow. It will help me a lot. Stay safe. Stay on the side of the light. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Here, we breathe the paranormal.